Warping lets you adjust the timing of audio by automatically detecting transients and allowing you to time compress or stretch between the transients. This can be very useful for changing the feel of drum loops, fixing timing and performances, or even matching the rhythmic feel of entire songs together for creating song mashups. We're going to start by warping a drum loop from Mixcraft's library. First I'm going to take this down to one bar to make it a little easier to work with, and then we'll loop it by dragging up here and pressing the loop button. Now I'll open it in the sound tab by double clicking, and I'll click the warp button. Mixcraft now shows all the transients with blue and gray vertical lines. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. The blue lines represent hits that Mixcraft thinks are part of a bead, and the gray lines represent all the other transients. If the sound tab snap is set to snap to grid, like mine is over here, the carrot location automatically snaps to warp lines in addition to the regular grid line locations. So for example, I can click here, and there, and we jump right to the warp lines. It's important to understand that warping an audio region doesn't have any immediate effect on the sound. Clicking warp just tells Mixcraft to analyze the audio and find all the transient hits. In order to start editing the timing of audio, we'll need to add warp markers, which are different than the blue and black warp lines. To add a warp marker, position the mouse near a warp line and click. This places the carrot on the warp line. You can add a warp marker by clicking on the Add Warp Marker button right here. This bright red line with a flag on the top is a warp marker. You can also add a warp marker by right-clicking anywhere in the waveform and choosing Add Warp Marker. It's even easier to add a warp marker by double-clicking anywhere in the waveform, and you can delete warp markers by right-clicking on one and selecting Delete. Let's add a few more warp markers this way. Now that we've got some warp markers in place, let's see what we can do to our drum loop. I'm going to press Play, and I can move the warp markers by positioning my mouse up here on the flag, and you can see the mouse turns into two arrows, and now I can move this around, and you can see the waveform actually changes. Now you might notice that this is snapping to grid locations right now, because I've got it on snap to grid, so I'm going to turn off snap to grid, and now I can freely move these, and you can see I can really change the feel of the drum beat. Now these are kind of extreme examples so you can hear what's going on, but you can really delicately tweak the feel of a beat or any audio for that matter by turning the snap off and moving things around by tiny bits. And of course remember that you can zoom up really close if you want to be more accurate with your movements. In this delightful little ditty I've intentionally sung the lead vocal a little bit off time, and I'm going to use warping to correct the timing. So let's have a listen. I've been moving double feature, how's the view up from the bleachers? So you can hear I'm a little bit off time, so let's warp this lead vocal. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Then I'm going to hit the warp button, and you can see all my warp markers have appeared. So now let's listen to this and see what we want to fix. Been moving, double feature. Okay, double feature is definitely a little off, so that's these guys over here. So let's turn on our snap, and I'm going to add some warp markers. I'm going to put the carrot over here, right click, add warp marker, add warp marker. Notice that I keep moving the carrot every time. And we'll even stick one here in the middle of the word. I'm going to want to drag these to the left a little bit because I'm a little behind the beat. So I'm going to turn snap to grid off so I can control it with a little more resolution. And zoom in a little maybe. And I'm going to go over here and move over a little bit. And here. And here. And like we did with the other example, I can loop a section over here and have it play while I edit. Double feature, double feature, That's pretty on, actually. Double feature, double feature, double feature, double feature, double feature. Now it's too far ahead of the beat. Double feature, double feature, double feature, double feature, double feature. That sounded pretty good, so let's turn off the loop and listen to the entire passage. Cotton movie, double feature. So I would probably go ahead and fix the beginning, which is a little rushed, and the ending over here, which is also a little dragged. But you get the idea. It's pretty easy to do. And the great thing is that if you want to snap these to actual beats, you can just turn the grid back on. And then the warp markers will snap directly to grid values. And by the way, another really good use for this is if you have multiple tracked stacked backing vocals and they don't exactly match up, you can not only quantize the starts of the words, but you can also stretch or compress the ends of phrases so they match up.